Okay. Um, and so originally, when the the early paper that really got to this was it was the paper on apparent motion. That was in 1912. Your, okay. Yes. Uh, and there, the issue was how is it that if you see properly timed, let's say, two different stimuli in slightly different spots, one first going on, then off, and the other one going on, if the time relations are correct, it looks to you as though one object is moving from one place to the other. And if you do these alternately, it's always moving back and forth. And the theories at the time of sensation and perception were having a devil of the time explaining why you see apparent motion when what you have is a succession of stationary stimuli. Uh, one of the theories at the time was, uh, well, it must be eye motion or something like that that interprets uh, these two successive stationary stimuli as having moved. Uh, an elegant demonstration, part of this 1912 paper, that that couldn't be the case was if you have a fixation point with one pair of lines moving above and one below, mm -hmm. both in opposite directions, you can see those moving. The same. You can't have eye motions in two directions at the same time to explain why you can see motion in opposite directions at the same time, and so on. So the whole, in this case, uh, the perception of a single object moving from one place to another uh, is something quite different from the sum total of these two stationary sensations. That's mm -hmm. what kicked it off. The 1923 paper that you were referring to earlier on the principles of perceptual organization uh, carried that a lot farther in, in terms of how is it that uh, the um, pandemonium of weird and altering stimulation of the cells of the retina ends up resulting in people perceiving things and objects and people in space and, and relative to each other. Uh, how is that, uh, uh, that wild um, bunch of, of individual stimulations to a di different degree of different uh, retinal elements uh, translated into mm -hmm. perception of real things in the real world. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I think there's a general misconception about uh, how Gestalt theory originated, at least among people who thought about this. Uh, it's usually considered to have started in perception. And as a matter of fact, the initial work on uh, Gestalt issues was in what is now called cognition, the psychology of thinking. Mm -hmm. There was a pa another paper published in 1912 before the uh, Five paper, the five of the, the apparent movement paper, uh, on thinking of primitive people, numerical thinking of primitive people, um, which gave all kinds of what he called be beautiful examples of so called primitive thinking that was anything but primitive, that uh, managed to be true to the particular situation and what was required in that situation. For example, if uh, you have to build a uh, hut. Um, you need a certain number of uh, vertical pieces of wood of a certain size and strength and width and size um, and some other that are smaller for various other roles. It's not just how many pieces of wood do you need, but specifically what kinds of wood are needed for which kinds of parts of the building and so on. Hmm. Or if uh, I break a spear in two, it's not in two, what do I have now? A broken spear. Uh, maybe one piece of wood, a nice long one, another one with a tip on it still, which I could reuse for something else. It's not that the ones just became two. Another favorite example of his was a chain of eight links. Mm -hmm. You cut that in half, okay, you've got two chains of four links each. Cut each of those in half, you've got four links of two. Well, four, four chains, are they chains of two things? Cut those in half again, it's no chain anymore. You've got two circles. Cut one of those in half, you don't even have a link anymore. You've got some semi arcs. There's no end of such kind of thing. But the mental operations using numbers uh, are in the Western mathematical system uh, not responsive to the uh, problem that the mathematical procedure is designed to try to take care of or to help or to fix or do something about. It. Mm -hmm. It's too abstract that uh, so-called primitive thinking uh, can often come up with uh, very useful concepts like uh, with rice, you don't count the number of pieces of rice you have, it's a few or many or a spoonful or mm -hmm. something like that rather than the number as such, etc. And for that matter, this kind of issue uh, 
uh, kept Max Wertheimer going from his earliest years in um, working in psychology to his posthumous work of productive thinking. I was going to say, is this, this is the issue of productive thinking. Exactly. Okay. And in that book, uh, which was published a couple of years after he passed away, and which is still in print in 2010, uh, he tries to analyze how productive, creative thought occurs from things as simple as how do you figure out uh, how to get the uh, area of a parallelogram all the way through all sorts of other mathematical and social and other issues, <coughs> excuse me, through to uh, how Einstein developed the theory of relativity. Right, wow. Um, let's see, where to go next? Well, so from the very beginning he was working, I, if I understand correctly, he was working with two very promising students. Um, oh, well, they were colleagues. Wolfgang Kühler and uh, Kurt Kofka right. were uh, also at the University of Frankfurt at the time that he was doing his experiments on the Phi phenomenon, 1910, 1911. Mm -hmm. um, and those two became very prominent colleagues in developing what became called the Berlin School of Gestalt Theory. Uh, Kofka went to a different university, Gießen, and then came to this country. Uh, Kühler to Berlin, where um, for quite a few, well, a decade and a half, I guess, a little over that, he uh, turned out a huge chunk of uh, students all of whom were doing uh, research in this uh, Gestalt tradition. Me much of it was perceptual, much of it was in learning, uh, memorizing, what we now call cognition. Um, there was a large uh, body of research by the mid-30s with Kafka and put together into a major textbook, Principle of Gestalt Psychology, which was published in English in the mid-30s. Right. 